Their four-year-old son fought cystic fibrosis. Carrie and Patrick Burns were fighting collection agencies. They have since lost their retirement funds, their home, and their son. The fallout from their medical debt, however, continues. Our fourth story on the countdown, new legislation aimed at helping Americans forced to declare bankruptcy, the ability to declare bankruptcy and do it quickly. The man who's overseeing the legislative fight, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, joins us presently. But first, the details. A Judiciary Subcommittee today holding hearings on the Medical Bankruptcy Fairness Act aimed at carving out an exception to current bankruptcy law by providing assistance to those buried in medical debt. Like the aforementioned Carrie Burns. Ms. Burns and her husband Patrick tried to help their son Finnegan through a 13-month battle with cystic fibrosis. Both parents took leave from their jobs and lived off of disability and unemployment pay. After several surgeries, the Burnses fell so far behind in their bills they could not recover. And young Finnegan Burns lost his battle with cystic fibrosis in March. His mom and dad, though, are still fighting theirs with creditors. In order to file bankruptcy, we needed a $250 retainer and a $1,300 filing fee. We actually had to borrow the money in order to officially go bankrupt. Burns' family also had to go through mandatory credit counseling. Carrie Burns called the entire process demeaning and demoralizing. At odds with the proposed legislation, the ranking Republican Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Senator Sessions opposing the elimination of an income-related test for medical debtors. His point, requiring people above the median income to pay back something, is not unfair. But if they do have high income, uh, high incomes, then uh, uh, why shouldn't they pay their hospital? Backing the White House proposal, Elizabeth Edwards, who testified that the plan would be a less catastrophic bankruptcy option that recognizes unique circumstances. I sit in a chemotherapy chair um, once every few weeks and listen to people uh, speaking with the person who accompanied them, wondering how they're going to pay for the kinds of care that they, that they need in order to stay alive. Joining me now is promised the chairman of the Senate Subcommittee on Administrative Oversight, Sheldon Whitehouse. Senator, thanks for your time tonight. Good to be with you, Keith. Thank you. How is this not a no-brainer? How do the Republicans fight you on this? I don't know. You got me. This is uh, the perfect family. Uh, Carrie Burns and her husband Patrick both worked. Uh, they're a hardworking American couple. She had worked since she was 14 years old. Uh, they had a baby boy. They had health insurance. Everything looked ideal. And then comes the diagnosis that their little boy has cystic fibrosis and the nightmare of uh, all that medical care and ultimately losing their son begins. And on top of that, gets piled on the nightmare of dealing with our broken health care system and of dealing with a bankruptcy system that treats them as if uh, they were crooks, as if they were there to abuse the system. And we're not, uh, nobody's asking and you're not proposing a bailout for each of these families to use the appropriate term. You're asking simply to make a, what is an ugly and life-changing process, in addition to the horror that they've gone through, an ugly and life-changing process of bankruptcy, just a little bit faster and a little kinder. Is that gently, essentially what you're asking? Yeah, the human element of this is really important. We've talked about the health care problem in terms of, you know, socialized medicine and all these concepts. We talk about bankruptcy. Here is a mother in the intensive care unit with her dying son, and she is being bombarded by collection agencies calling her on the cell phone. When the boy dies and she has to come home to Rhode Island, she has to sell goods on eBay mm -hmm. to pay for the gas and the tolls home because she's so broke. And when she gets back and she tries to go into bankruptcy, she has to undergo credit counseling and answer questions like, what has this experience taught you about better managing your credit? Mm -hmm. I mean, and she's doing this to a machine. There's a computer on the other side of the credit counseling. I tell you, for a party that likes to say that government should keep out of people's lives, this is government requiring a mother who just lost her son to go through nonsensical credit counseling just to string out the process longer. I think the original purpose of this bill was to string out the process longer so that credit cards could make more money off people longer. But let's at least carve out people who've had a medical catastrophe. 
Do you sometimes feel, Senator, that when you see such um, obstinance, you, you know, the human condition you mentioned, when you see the disconnect from that, from the simple humanity of a situation like this and so many other hundreds, thousands of other cases exactly like the Burns family, do you want to ask the folks who are opposing you here, like, you know, have you ever been sick? Have you ever thought about how much worrying about paying would make it more difficult to get better? Yeah, and I think one of the things that we've tried to do on the Senate floor is to bring as many of these personal stories forward to the American public because this is not, this health care fight is not a fight about concepts. Mm -hmm. It's not a fight about ideologies. It's a fight about families who think they have coverage and then there's a hole and they lose everything that they've ever fought for. It's a fight about people who think they have coverage and lose it and then they don't go to the doctor's visit and they miss that critical diagnosis and their disease uh, takes them on a deadly path because they didn't get diagnosed in time. I mean, these things happen over and over and over again, and the human cost of our present health care system simply has to be brought home over and over and over again against the propaganda. Well, Senator, I congratulate you on, on your restraint and not, you know, slamming your head against one of those, those marble walls behind you when, when you deal with this in, uh, in this kind of intensity. And as always, my compliments and my thanks to your uh, great efforts on this. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, Democrat of Rhode Island, and the Judiciary Committee. Thank you again, sir. Thank you, Keith. Tonight, 